So welcome everybody and thanks for attending this presentation. Uh, in this talk, I will describe you the Anaximander approach uh, that we used in the team to uh, chart microservices and how we can support microservices developers using such an approach. So this work is a joint effort. Uh, my name is Sebastian Mosser. I'm a professor at uh, University of Quebec in Montreal. And it's a work done in collaboration with Jean-Philippe Cassis, also from UCAM, Florian Wouters from uh, CESIXIA, Florian Jorosek from Université Côte d'Azur, and uh, Nawel Moha from uh, ETS. So the main context of the work is the SPLC 2020 challenge uh, that was uh, available this year. The SPLC is the Software Project Line Conference, and um, this challenge was about how one can use or reuse microservices architecture in uh, the context of uh, deployment and reassembling of services. So uh, considering six reference architectures that were uh, curated by the author of the challenge, how can we explore and analyze the variability of such uh, systems and how can how one can assemble a new eShop, because all those systems were eShops, to build a new one, for example. So we were working on this challenge, and we actually published an answer to this challenge at the uh, SPLC conference uh, in uh, October. But while doing the job of analyzing the variability and understanding those different architecture, uh, as developers, like us, trying to reassemble the different services together, we were facing a lot of challenges that were not addressed by the state-of-the-art and state-of-practice tooling. So that's why we created the Anaximander um, approach that I'm going to describe in this, tool, in this talk. So the main problem is that when you're trying to understand a microservice architecture, you're a developer and you want to understand the code base, you're like a new developer joining a team or working on the legacy uh, microservice architecture, you can basically follow two approach. First approach is to use uh, runtime monitoring and the runtime monitoring will give you information about the different containers, how they communicate together and how they're deployed. And you can also use classical uh, reverse engineering method like class diagram extraction, uh, runtime trace analysis, and those different kind of things. But one of the main problem is that microservice architectures are really, really complicated to understand. And this doesn't really help because when we were digging inside those microservices architecture, we were not interested about how they were deployed. We just wanted to understand how the functional and non-functional concerns were intertwined together inside those different architecture. And it was really, really complicated to uh, get useful information from those approaches. Another problem is the technological heterogeneity of those different architectures. Uh, even if polyglot development is not truly really, uh, true in industrial practice, as it, as it was uh, demonstrated at MC uh, this year, we still have a lot of different systems written with a lot of different technologies from uh, language to write the services, like and the database technologies, deployment technologies, uh, scalability technologies, and all those things are mixed together, meaning that it's really complicated to try to provide like an all-in-one solution that would be able to analyze and provide support to any developer facing any kind of uh, microservice architecture. So basically our problem is a classical knowledge extraction problem. And especially with microservice architectures, one size does not fit all based on the technological variability that do exist. And it also depends on what you want to achieve and what you want to understand when entering inside uh, your architecture. So I have in the next slide a different uh, like case study to show and demonstrate those different uh, dimensions. And talking about dimension, this is a real challenge that we are facing uh, nowadays with microservice architectures, is that extracting and gathering information from such architectures, it triggers really uh, interesting 
uh, reverse engineering challenges, basically because there are way too many dimensions that one can analyze, and it really depends on what you want to do and what you want to understand from the architecture. So our proposition is to uh, use the approach followed by the like old cartographer. When they were trying to map the world, the Greeks, uh, they first provide in uh, 600 before Christ, the uh, Anaximander map. Anaximander was um, a scholar and he created this very inaccurate map of the world, but that was sufficient based on the knowledge they had at those times. And that's really the approach we want to follow with Anaximander, hence the name, is that we don't need to know everything. We just need to know what is important. And then based on this understanding, which might be inaccurate on some dimension for sure, we can refine and we can explore those uh, missing dimensions. For example, in the next map, they were adding mountains and they were adding new rivers. And that's what we want to do, like we want to support new exploration of the architecture. So the principle, how it works, you basically do have an existing map that can be the uh, empty map at the beginning. And we will use exploration probes that are available off the shelf. There is a, like an implementation coming with an Aximander with uh, available uh, probes. And you can take those probes and run them on your microservice architecture. It can be static analysis probes, like most of all of the one we had right now are static analysis one. It can be runtime analysis, it can be monitoring, it can be a lot of different probes. We really don't care about how they're working, they're considered as black boxes. And a probe will provide a partial map that is expressed in the same language than the existing map, it's a description language. And using this, we can use a composition algorithm to create the enriched map that contains details that one wants to obtain at the time of the exploration. So how does it work in a nutshell? Each probe will send you a map uh, using uh, this uh, Python description language, uh, here represented as graphs. And we're going to use a graph composition algorithm, like classical graph composition merge um, approaches, to build the composed map and enrich the map step by step. And what is an exploration probe like? More concretely, well, it's basically a software that is uh, a black box, so it can be written in any language. And that will perform an analysis, like for example, here it's digging inside Java code to extract a topic exchange uh, variable that are used for asynchronous communication between services in the Spring uh, framework using RabbitMQ. So you see it's very, very technical and very specialized. And that's the very idea of a probe. It's really dedicated to one task and not anything else. And then you can use the probe to explore your services based on this dimension. And if you're not interested in this dimension, then you're just not using the probe. Let's take an example to make it more concrete. We first start with the sock shop, uh, which is one of the SPLC challenge that I was mentioning uh, before. And we start with the weave scope uh, system. Uh, that is a runtime monitoring uh, tool that do exist that analyze the different Docker uh, containers and give you this representation of the different uh, systems, the different containers and their relation, like network relation uh, that do exist among those different um, containers. Which is interesting here is that not all those informations are interesting because by monitoring the uh, Docker system where we are extracting information that are not related to our architectures, but maybe to other uh, containers, for example. So the first thing we, the first things we're doing is to compose this existing map with uh, a map extracted from the uh, Kubernetes deployment manifest that gives us the uh, how one wants to deploy our sock shop system. And then we can compose those two information, like the relationship comes from the weave, weave scope and the relevant and interesting nodes uh, will come from the cubes uh, deployment manifest. And this gives us a better map that contains only the information we needed to have. Then if we want to explore how the asynchronous communication works, this map doesn't help us because it just states that there is a RabbitMQ 
uh, node that communicates with shipping and queue master, but it's not really interesting for the developer. If we use the RabbitMQ probes I was uh, describing before, then we can explore the shipping service and it will give us the information that this um, shipping system use a queue named shipping task exchange. And then we can compose this probe partial map result, result with our map to enrich it and refine and replace this RabbitMQ that wasn't useless, that was useless, into something more useful based on the question we were trying to answer. Another um, way of exploring the architecture would be to go functional, where the previous exploration were non-functional. And for example, we want to understand how one is paying for an order. When uh, someone orders shop, how he or she is going to pay for it. And this example is interesting because it triggers, like it really emphasizes the way that the fact that there's different sources of knowledge, different sources of information that we need to combine together. If you use the uh, Spring Pro, that is basically analyzing uh, Java code, uh, we can extract information about how the order service expose a given REST route and how this route is calling another REST route. And if we are using the Swagger probe, uh, it gives us information about the contracts of the different microservices and the different routes they are exposing. So based on those two information, it's now possible to understand how the order and payment service are interacting together. And we can compose those information to create the map that do enter our very specific question when we're trying to explore the architecture. To conclude this talk, uh, the main point was that understanding a microservice architecture is really difficult and it triggers really interesting challenges uh, where a classical reverse engineering method doesn't really help uh, to answer precise uh, questions. So we propose an Aximander as a set of composable probes and a composition engine to address this. And as an Aximander is named after uh, like explorers and cartographer, we really want to leverage this metaphor and continue exploring how microservice uh, architectures are defined. And one of the exciting perspectives we're working on right now is to explore other kind of dimension like uh, co-development. Uh, if services are independent in theory, in practice, it happens that some services are always uh, modified together in uh, the version control history. So this is interesting information because it means that even if they're independent by design, uh, at the implementation level, they are not. So how can we like leverage those information to uh, provide a better understanding of what's happening at the code level? That's what we're working on right now. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, if you do have any question about uh, an Aximander, uh, feel free to drop us an email uh, on my email or to ask questions during the uh, live presentation at uh, Xox this year. Thank you very much. Bye.